And in just under half an hour, Radio 2's sound picture of the cinema, Star Sound Extra, concentrating this week on Deborah Carr. She'll be talking to Philip Bergson about her career and her latest starring role in The Assam Garden. Nick Jackson invites you to take a seat in the stalls for Star Sound Extra at half past ten. But now, it's two minutes past ten. We present The Grumbleweeds. Albert, Carl, Graham, Morris and Robin in The Grumbleweeds Guide to the Galaxy. Now, come on, everybody. We must be able to get this one. Seven down. Fathead. Five letters ending in a T. Fathead. Now, come on, Wilfred. This calls for a trip to the old masterminds. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking. Fathead. Five letters ending in a T. Yeah, I've got it. Dining room table. <laughs> you big stripe on Grimshaw. Where do you get that from? Furniture shop. You'll get it in a minute, pal. I'll knock your rotten teeth out. If you do, can I have them? <laughs> simmer down, simmer down, everybody. Like, are we like doing this crossword or aren't we? Hey, look, the postman's coming up the drive. Quick, Melanie, see what he's bringing. Right, oh. Hey, I wonder if I've won that competition. And what competition is that, Wolf Elson? It, it was on the back of me jar of marmalade. You had to put in order your favourite flavours and then you had to make up a slogan for Scroggins Marmalade. Tell us the slogan that you invented, old son. Yeah, it was. It's by far the best. It's much better than the rest. It's... Go on, Wilfred. It's what? That's it. <laughs> That's my slogan. I don't understand. Well, it had to be no more than 12 words. <laughs> Well done, Wilfred. Hey, this looks an important letter. I have to sign for it. You don't think it's my knighthood, do you? I didn't even know you wore one, old gaffer. <laughs> <laughs> Little joke there, right? Oh, the rotten letter. OK, OK. It's from a firm of solicitors. We're being sued. Oh, I like that. We've dumplings. <laughs> sued, you bonehead, not stewed. Now then, now then, this is a bit like double disastrous. God bless my soul, dearie Lord. Wow. Read the letter, Uncle Rubbish. Right oh. It's from Strange, Strange, Weird and Strange <laughs> Solicitors. To whom it may concern. On behalf of our client, Sid Squeak, news agent of 67 Silver Street, I hereby refer to the aforementioned, hereafter referred to as the claimant. Hitherto acting on behalf of the said correspondent, herein and hereby acknowledged as the plaintiff, referred to hereafter as the above mentioned. Do hereby state that unless suitable settlement can be made over the conveyancing of the aforementioned, it leaves us with no alternative than to comply with Clause 4, Paragraph 2, Subsection 3 of the Highways and Byways Act of 1647, Unless by deed of government at sunrise a week on Wednesday, the said claimant issues a rate of habeas corpus as referred to previously by the aforementioned. We remain yours simply, strange, strange, weird and strange. Oh, P.S. Apparently you haven't paid your paper bill. P.P.S. Could we have four tickets for your next show? Right, this is a bit double puzzling. I can't understand it. Whose responsibility is it to pay the flipping paper bill? It's Wilfred's. Well, you've made a right pig's ear of it this time, Grimshaw. Yes, Wilfred. Why haven't you paid him? I have paid him. I can remember the last time I went in and settled up. I paid him up today and brought home the evening paper. I can remember the headline, England win World Cup. <laughs> you pathetic little wally. Yeah. A 
Have you any idea how much we owe for all those papers and magazines we've had delivered in the last 20 years? Yes. How much, Wilfred? Just over 75 pounds. How much over? About 4,000 pounds over. <laughs> That's bad. I've got six pounds in the post office you can have. We're broke. We're finished. We're done. I don't suppose I'll ever get a set of teeth now, will I? <laughs> well, what's the matter with you lot? You look dumbstruck. Yes, they do, Ernest. Tell us the worst. Gas mask gob hasn't paid the paper bill since 1966. You're joking. Oh, it's not Geoffrey. Look at his eyes. The cold. <laughs> we could all have to go to prison. We've had a solicitor's letter and it turns out that we owe Sid Squeak £4,075. Ernest, I've just realised the implication. Oh, what? There'll be no more papers till we settle up. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> I can't live without my knitting monthly. <laughs> and what about my tapestry times? Oh, oh, what are we going to do, Geoffrey? Oh, it's tragic. It's tragic. I think my voice has broken. <laughs> oh, it hasn't, Geoffrey. Do you know, Ernest, in this month's knitting monthly, they're giving away a free packet of bugle beads. <laughs> bugle beads? Oh, they're not. They are. I want them. I want them. What do I want a free packet of? Bugle beads. <laughs> bugle beads, yes. Well, you can't have them because of this duck egg in a gas mask. Think he means me. <laughs> Melanie, go see who's at that door. What if it's a policeman? Bite his leg. Ooh, how can I bite his leg? I've no teeth. Dig your gums into him then. Look out of the window, Jim. Who is he? Dearly Lord, dearly Lord, it's the man himself, the old Mr. News Agent Geezer, Sid Squeak. Oh dear, what can we do? Uh, there's a gentleman to see you. Excuse me, but um, my name is uh, Sid Squeak. News agent of 67 Silver Street. I understand you have received some correspondence from my solicitors. We right, right, right. We have indeed, Dr. Squeak. Oh, Mr. Squeak, what can we say except how sorry we are that this has happened? Oh, yeah, we are, definitely. Could you lend us £4,000? <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, but this is a very uh, serious matter. I have here an itemised list of newspapers and magazines and uh, certain periodicals uh, sent to you since uh, 1960 or uh, £3.96 per week comes to £4,075 pre... Uh, <laughs> As it happens, as it happens, like, Mr. Squeak, we are all like a bit, like, double, double, terribly sorry. As it happens, Mr. Saville, the only deceit that I'm left with is to confiscate your house and its contents. All your goods and chattel, uh, starting with the carpet, curtains, uh, standard lamp and the brass candlesticks. Now look here, Squeak face. Don't start threatening us, pal. Or you might get the brass candlesticks where you least expect them. <laughs> Excuse me, sunshine. But with the greatest of respect, you are in no a position to start making threats. Send me four thousand and seventy-five pounds or petal for prison. As soon as I receive the money, my receipt will be in the post. Oh dear. <laughs> He's serious. What are we going to do? Don't panic, old gaffer. It could be worse. You are joking. <laughs> Nothing could be worse than not getting them bugle beads. Oh, shut up about your rotten bugle beads. We are in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we are. Is that? We are in trouble with a capital P. Caused by a prize prat with a capital P. <laughs> We've got to have a meeting of everybody. Let's say two o'clock in here this afternoon. Right. 
we all here? Because we've got a big decision to make. Quite right, Uncle Nasty, quite right. Has anybody any constructive suggestions as to what to do about paying this 4,000 quid? Yeah, it's easy. I don't know why I never thought of it before. Leave the country! <laughs> Not a bad idea, Will. What about Jersey? Get me the wool and I'll knit you one. <laughs> Crying out loud, oi! Just pack it in. Come on now. Be serious. Actually, Uncle Nasty, Will's idea isn't all that silly. There was an advert in the paper the other day for a group of people who were prepared to take part in an experiment. But it meant leaving the country for six months. Now, as it happens, Uncle Rubbish, that sounds exactly what we're looking for. Where was it in? Australia? No. In space. <laughs> oh, bags me a silver army space suit. Oh, it'll match your new hairdo. <laughs> I think that's a fantastic idea. Right, how do you feel about it, Feeder Hell Girl? Don't expect me to come with you. I can't cope down here, so I'd have no chance up there. Oh, come on, man, you'd like it, wouldn't you, Dad? I don't know. <laughs> oh, don't you start. Shut your gob. Right, calm down, Feeder, calm down. Let's ask Fred Fibber what he thinks. Not new to me about going into space, pal. I went to moon long before them Americans did. Ah, belt up, Fibber. Um, listen, I'm telling you, it was me who invented that famous catchphrase. One small step for man, hell of a big jump for our Fred. <laughs> you can count me in, pal. Right, right, right. That is settled, then. Leave it to me, Jimbo. I'll ring up this space centre job place and I'll put our names down. Make sure we don't go on a Monday, cos that's me night for aerobic. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. And, and try and keep off Thursday afternoons. I've got my air appointments and my sunbed session. <laughs> Look, pal, well, there'll be no sunbed sessions in prison. That's where we'll all be if we don't do a bunk. Uncle Nasty's put it in a nutshell. I'll go ring him up and I'll come straight back. Come in, Uncle Rubbish. Now then, old gaffer, what news? Fantastic news. We go tomorrow. Hey, I think that's fantastic. Wow. Wow, yeah. Wow. Are we taking the house with us? You stupid Wally. <laughs> I don't think it's stupid. They put all sorts of things in space. Well, that's right, Uncle Nasty. Yeah, the first semi-detached in space. <coughs> Just imagine. What a double fab idea. You're off your rocker. How could they get a rotten house on top of a rocket? You're right, Uncle Nasty. Besides, we did a heck of a long clothesline. <laughs> anyway, I've written all our instructions down on this bit of paper. But the man said we have to choose a leader. We need a man of strong character. That's me. Of strong personality. That's me. Of proven leadership. That's me. Of immense resourcefulness. Oh, that's me. Of great courage, prepared to lay down his life if called to. That's not me. <laughs> right, I'm taking over. Personal luggage will be kept to a minimum. He'll only be allowed to take eight kilograms. Oh, that's awkward. I haven't got any kilograms. <laughs> now, this means one shirt. One shirt. One vest. One vest. Two pairs of socks. All right. That means I'll have to go and buy another pair. <laughs> Look, to make it easier, apart from the socks, just one item of any other clothing. Oh, Geoffrey, I'll never survive with just one pair of slingbacks. No. <laughs> Nor will I, Ernest. All right, now, just in case you're homesick, I'll allow you to take one souvenir to remind you of home. That's very kind of you, Uncle Nasty. Now, where do you think I can find a box eight feet long and four feet high? <laughs> That is like some souvenir. You'll be taking it to space, Dr. Rubbish. Dare Jimmy ask what it will be? The fireplace. <laughs> oh, the happy hours I've spent cleaning out the grate and black in it. Hang on, hang on. Just a minute, cabbage head. What good is a fireplace where you're going? There won't be any coal up there, you pranach. I think there will be. Uh, how are you so sure there will be coal up there, Will Folson? Because I'm taking 200 weight as a souvenir. <laughs> Somebody hit him with a coal hammer. What about me? I can't cope. I can't cope down here, never mind up there. 
No one's even thought about gravity. I'll take two boxes of that instead then. <laughs> How can I cope with no gravity? I'll have sausages floating around my kitchen. Oh, I just can't cope with floating sausages. <laughs> well, you'll have to take a flying pun then. <laughs> Then you can shut your gob and all, frog face. Oh, I can't cope with this madhouse. I just can't go! That's all we need. Melanie having a whinge. Oh, dear. Oi, what's wrong, Melanie? <laughs> go on, dear. Look, you can tell us. Melanie, we might be able to help. <laughs> Melanie, do you see what it is? <laughs> Melanie, <laughs> Melanie, <laughs> Melanie, has the cat got your tongue? No, no, I got my teeth. <laughs> Look, just pack your stuff, we blast off at nine in the morning. Right, now, is everybody comfortable? Jimbo? I am, as it happens, old gaffer, in a go state. Well, Fred, are you strapped into your seat properly? Yeah. Well, I think I've done it wrong. I don't think this strap should be round my neck. <laughs> Leave it where it is. What about Ernest and Jeffrey? Oh, I'm fine. So am I, Ernest. This safety belt's a bit constricting, but I'm, I'm not complaining. Oh, I know. I know what you mean, Jeffrey. I've got a tickle and I can't get to scratch it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Melanie? Could you do with a heat shield? No, I could do with a gum shield. <laughs> right, hold the phone, everybody, because I can see Fred Fibber not strapped into his seat. Don't worry about me, pal. Number of space trips I've done, gravity don't affect me. You get right up my nose, you do, Fibber. Are you all right, Frida? You look a bit, like, worried. Oh, don't you start. I think I've left some cabbage on a low light. <laughs> Adolf! Did you remember to cancel the milk? I don't know. Do you wonder I'm not mental? Why did we have to bring him with us? Right, calm down, calm down, because like, according to what's on this computer type screen, we blast off in 30 seconds. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, heck. What's the trouble, Wilfred? I want to go to the toilet. <laughs> Try and control yourself, or son. We've got 20 seconds to go. Are we all in a go state? Well, I certainly am. <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I can't even cross my legs. <laughs> Three, two, one, we're off. <laughs> oh, Ernest, can you feel that surge of power? Oh, I can, Geoffrey, I can. Oh. Hey, can we do that bit again? <laughs> Look out of the window, everybody. We're on our way. We are indeed, old gaffer. And where we're going, nobody knows. I know where I want to go. <laughs> what a moment to cherish. Do you know, I feel quite drained. I wish I did. <laughs> Space, here we come.
Another cup of tea, Uncle Nasty. <laughs> You're joking. How the heck can you drink tea without gravity? Have it without sugar instead. <laughs> right, look, who's had breakfast and who hasn't? Well, I'd like a soft-boiled egg, please, with lightly buttered soldiers with the crust cut off. <laughs> well, if you want to eat here, you can make it yourself. I can't get the hang of this space kitchen. I've gone through two boxes of matches trying to light that microwave oven. <laughs> oh, I just can't go. Oh, but how am I going to face the day without me lightly buttered soldiers? That's exactly how I feel about me slice of black pudding. Well, I haven't had a piece of black pudding for years. <laughs> oh, I couldn't live without me black pudding. Oh, I can only eat stuff I can suck. <laughs> You can suck a black pudding, can't you, Ernest? Oh, you certainly can, Geoffrey. What can you do with a black pudding? <laughs> suck it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, Mum, can I have some black pudding? Just where do you think I'm going to get black pudding from? We are thousands of miles from the nearest butcher's shop. <laughs> oh, why won't everybody shut the gums? Well, you, you can forget your fancy foods. This spaceship needs tidying up. Grimshaw, make the beds. Right, where's the ammo? <laughs> I haven't lost me sense of humour, have I? <laughs> You'll lose something else in a minute, pal. Right, hold the phone, everybody. There is a message coming through on the computer screen. Hey, yes. It's for us. It says, Docking Bay jammed. Prepare member of crew for spacewalk to repair it. Prior to rendezvous with alien space capsule. Right, hold the phone. What an honour. What an honour. We have been like chosen to rendezvous with an alien spaceship, no less. Yeah, and they want one of us to do a spacewalk and repair the docking bay. That must be dangerous. I mean, there must be a certain risk that whoever does it, he might not come back. With a bit of luck, yeah. <laughs> so, ideally, the person who goes on this spacewalk should be someone who wouldn't be missed all that much if anything went wrong. Absolutely. What time do I go? <laughs> what a brave man. Wilfred, I have nothing but admiration for you. Only a man of great courage or a fool would volunteer for such a task. Come on, Grimshaw, on your way. Have we got everything you need, Wilfred? I think so, but I'm sure there's something I've forgotten. Right, right, right. Let us have the old quick check. Space suit? Yeah. Space helmet? Yeah. Gloves? Yeah. What about your space boots? Yeah. Flask of coffee? Yeah. Cheese and pickle sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. Your bit of blanket you chew when you're frightened? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think that's everything, Wilfred. Right, on your bike. Here's your monkey wrench to unjam the docking bay. Right, I'm going then. Do you want to say something before you go, Wilfred? Yeah. It is a far better thing I do before I did it. <laughs> but having done it, I mean, I want to go to the toilet. Open the door. What a double, double brave man, Uncle Rivers. He's braver than you think, Jimbo. I've just realised what it is he's forgotten. And what is that, old gaffer? His lifeline. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. I thought it was something important. I must talk to him. Well, Fred. of control, orbiting the Earth at 22,000 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> we are going to try to help you. <laughs> Do you have any major problem? <laughs> How 
around everything, Uncle Rubbish. You see what I see. It's another space capsule. Absolutely. It must be the one we're supposed to rendezvous with. Hey, look! There's a door open and a space mount's coming out. He's rescuing Wilfred. The Wally. <laughs> look! He's taking him back into his spaceship. Quick, Melanie, steer our capsule over to him. Right up. Left a bit. Up a bit. Right a bit. Right, we're nearly alongside. Slow down, Melanie. Hold it steady. Just hold it so our doorway is up as it is. That is it. Fantastic. Well done, old girl. Thank you, Mr. Spaceman. He can't hear you, old gaffer. He's got his helmet on. Hey, I think he wants to come aboard, me Wilfred. He saved me life. He saved me life. Jump across, Wilfred. Hey, and bring him with you. Right, right. Catch them, Uncle Rubbish. Catch them. <laughs> Shut the door, Melanie. Okay. I'm alive! I'm still alive! Thanks to this wonderful spaceman from an alien planet. Right, help him off with his helmet, Melanie, so we can thank him personally for saving Wilfred's life. Okay. I do not know, like, whether you understand our language, Dr. Spaceman, but actually, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Actually, you owe me over £4,000 for newspapers. <laughs> Plus the cost of a spaceship, and I'm seeing it till you sit <laughs> Grumbleweeds are currently appearing at the Princess Theatre in Torquay.